before this video starts, I want to make a quick disclaimer. The specific heist finale that I played in this video, preps and all, was recorded during a uh, bonus money event week. So when you do the heist, it will be of a different value than what you see here, unless it is done during this specific week. Bottom line, usually this heist pays out around 1.5 million average, depending on what target you get. So ignore the numbers for the heist finale in this case. This is just a simple guide on how to complete the preps and tips and tricks to make it easier. That out of the way, enjoy the video. Hey everyone, it's Benny. So the Cayo Perico heist has been out for what seems like a good month and a half. And in that time, we've already found some different methods for the heist. A lot of people use the submarine. That seems to be the most common approach. They'll grab the primary target, look for a secondary target elsewhere besides the compound, then go on. Uh, Tylarius is actually made popular an interesting method with the long fin, but honestly, I still believe the submarine is the quickest, the easiest, and the safest approach to the heist. And I just, I cannot think of any other way that it could be so easy. And in fact, I am going to make a complete guide, preps and all, on how to complete this heist with the submarine method. It's the most common method, people use this all the time, so in case you don't already know the method, this will help you guys get used to it. Now I'm going to say this right now, you do not need any optional preps for this method. You just need the bare minimum. You can do the armor prep or the disruption preps if you want, but that's up to you. If, you, if you're new to the heist, I would sort of recommend it since it'll help you get It'll help you get accustomed to the layout without having too much difficulty, but once you're like used to the heist, I recommend going without any of the disruption preps. You really don't need them, and I'm going to explain that throughout the guide, but let's go ahead and get started. So this is it, the summary method for the Cayo Perico heist, complete 100% foolproof. Let's go ahead and get started. Before you can get started with any of the preps, you're going to have to do some scouting on the island itself. Now, if you've done this for the first time before, then it's slightly different, but the overall method will stay the same. If you're doing this for the first time, you basically fly out on a private jet, you go through the whole thing with kind music, whatever, whatever their name is, and you start out, you actually get a pretty good head start when you do it for the first time. But it's literally no more difficult when you're doing it second, third, or whatever time. So basically what will happen is it will send you to somewhere up north of the map. So be prepared to fast travel with the submarine. And don't worry about fast traveling with it, by the way. It's so cheap. It's like 2000 You, you can easily make that during the heist. Easy, easy. It's, it, it's negligible, honestly, at this point. So go ahead and fast travel whenever you have to. Now, okay, so the vellum. This part is very, very self-explanatory. But, you know, I think this kind of speaks for itself. Just grab the vellum, fly out to the island, and I will say this. Don't let go of your controller. I've actually made this mistake so many times. This vellum tends to nosedive a lot. So, whenever you're flying this thing, just keep your attention on, at least until you get to the island. And then you can like actually safely set down the controller because if you mess this mission up You have to go all the way back to the submarine Start the prep mission again and go all the way back north go all the way back down. It's just a hassle So let's talk about actually traversing the island. You're going to need a Manchester scout Prep preferably you got to use this bike. You can find them at the airfield now a lot of people will go through the gate itself you can actually if you do this right, you can actually just slowly inch your way up this mound, and it's actually easier and it's safer. That guard at the tower, I don't know how, but he just doesn't see you climbing up that hill. Once you're past there, just go along the road and avoid any cars or cameras where you have to. At that point, it's pretty much just a straight shot. 
Now, let's talk about the single box. I know a lot of people have a problem with this. I even had a problem with this when I was first starting. So, finding the single box is easy. It's going to be either somewhere on the bottom or somewhere on one of these, like, uh, tower tiers. Now, when you find it, a lot of people will look at the symbols, and we'll take a look at that very shortly here, but a lot of people will look at the symbols, they'll try to do some math in their head. You don't have to go through that. Some people will, be, will say, you know, they're good at math, but honestly, you don't even have to be. Watch this. It's literally just trial and error. If something doesn't work, try a different one. You will eventually get it. It might take a few tries, but if you do the trial and error thing, you'll eventually get it. There's only like three different wires, limited amount of possibilities. You don't have to do any complicated math. I I got really lost when I did it too. Now you're gonna want to scroll through the cameras. Go for just look in the main vault. Don't bother looking at any of the other cameras. I know you're thinking, but Benny, what if I want to bring my friends with you? If you bring your friends with you, then just improvise. But Honestly, if you're looking to do this yourself, you don't really have to look at the other cameras. Alright, now depending on what your vault count content is, you're either going to have to get the safe codes or the plasma cutter. Let's talk about the safe codes first. So, if it's bearer bonds, it will be the plasma cutter. Or not plasma cutter, the safe code. If it's bearer bonds, the safe code. Same when you're doing it first time. First time, it will always be the madrazo files and you'll have to have the safe codes. So what's going to happen is it's going to send you to a casino. If you own a penthouse, you can skip a huge step. But if you don't own a penthouse, no worries. You basically just have to open the trunk of Tom's car and take and take basically some kind of a pass card or something. Now, I was an idiot. I I, I just habitually go to the wheel. Don't, don't do what I did. Just go straight to the elevator if it sends you up here. But anyway, like I said... If you own a penthouse, you do save a big step, but if you don't, eh, don't worry about it. It's just one more thing you have to do, and it's easy. Now, okay, so when you get up to the when you get up to the hotel floors, um, just run around until you find a set of two guards. You're gonna have to do a bit of searching, and I do recommend using a suppressed weapon because if you manage to get a drop on them and kill them early. If you kill them without getting alerted, you can actually just walk around the room, and I'll show you that in a sec. No. Now, these guys are very hyper alert, so you want to be careful when you kill them. Now, I managed to kill them stealthily, and here's exactly what I mean. I It took me a while to figure this out, by the way, so share this with your friends. But as long as you manage to kill them stealthily, you can walk around the entire penthouse without alerting anyone. Only when you kill someone or pull out your weapon will they be alerted. Now, I made a mistake here. Apparently, you can't melee while you're in this interior, which is dumb. I thought I was going to melee them. I didn't. But once you find the guy holding the codes, then pull out your weapon because at that point, you have the drop on everyone. And it's just easier. You know, it it's not too hard to do and it saves you some stress. You know, sorry to crash your party, people, but uh, anyway, it's just it's 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 stress saving. And if there's one thing I I like doing with these methods is I like to try to save myself and other people a lot of stress. So anyway, once you get the safe code, exit. Now this is very important. When you enter the penthouse, leave the sparrow where I did, just outside of the garage entry because that's where you exit every time. Whenever you exit the uh, casino, it's going to be on the side. So leave your sparrow there and just run your way to the front door like I did. As you can see, I exit from the side. I left my sparrow here. I was prepared. And I just take off. It's, it's just that easy. Now, I know a lot of people are intimidated by these press, but they really are simple. And a lot of them are the same every time. It's not like the casino heist where it's different each time. Now let's talk about what to do if you have to get the plasma cutter. So it's going to send you to this safe house. Right? It's going to send you to the safe house. These other guys are playing a robbery. And the idea, Pavel wants you to crash them before they head out, do the robbery, take the plasma cutter. But the catch is they've already left. 
So you gotta go in and take a picture of a planning board. It will be somewhere either on this wall or the wall opposite to it. You just take out your phone, take a picture, and after you exit the uh, safe house, Pavel will send you the uh, he'll send you the location, which will be somewhere in Rockford Hills. So like that area with like the high-end clothing stores and like you know the high-end barber and the Evangelica jewelry store. It'll be somewhere in that area. If not there, it'll be somewhere Del, Del Perro. It'll be in like that high-end like retail district. And also important, worth mentioning, the Sparrow, while you have to have the Sparrow to do this efficiently, be very careful maneuvering this thing. It is a very fragile helicopter. It is a workhorse. And as you can see, I messed up here. I actually had to call on a new one eventually. But be very careful. It's useful but it's still very fragile so that's worth mentioning once you head over immediately start bombing these guys are really aggressive they have unbelievable aim so just immediately start shooting try to get range I messed up I should have shot missiles when I had a chance anyway the reason you're doing this is you're preventing them from auto aiming you these guys have ridiculous auto aim so do your best to fight them. You might have to use a few explosives, but it's better than not being able to do the prep. You might have to do some free aiming too, because they have auto aim in the cars. I, I still don't understand how they do that. Grab the stuff. Grab the cutter, I mean. Now, here's a good tip too. When you're exiting, kill three of them. They'll usually spawn in waves of four. Kill three of them. Shoot the fourth one, but don't kill them. Because that way, it prevents the other four from spawning, and you have a chance to get out of dodge. So, that that's actually a really helpful tip for a lot of these preps, just to let you guys know. Alright, now let's talk about the fingerprint scanner. This one is a really straightforward mission. It's not really all that complicated, but I may as well go over it, because it is important. There's going to be a box outside the first location. Turn it off and there's a reason it's because when you go inside you get to do this without them seeing you now I missed um, it helps to shoot the ground but the trick is you take your RPG and you shoot the ground just right there in front of you where I did second time you will you will you will get killed by your RPG but by the time you respawn and go back in everyone else will have died in the blast and you have a chance to get to a laptop. Nice password, El Rubio. <laughs> oh, there's no way I could have guessed that. But anyway, once you got that, head over to the next location. The next location will be somewhere across the city from where the first one is. And once you've done this enough times, you can actually get to a point where you can predict where the next location is. <sighs> Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. This mission really is easy. But anyway, go to the location, land, be careful when you land. Now, this place doesn't have the uh, power box for the cameras, so just go ahead and shoot these. Don't shoot the ones at the other spot because that actually will alert them. But for whatever reason, when you shoot them here, it actually saves you. I, I don't know how that works. Just do what I did and you should be fine. So run in, grab the fingerprint scanner, it's going to be somewhere on one of these desks, and just run by the desks and eventually it'll pop up, you'll see it, pick it up, then run out. And the reason I, I'm telling you to destroy the cameras is because when you walk out, no NPCs. If you do, if you forget to, if you forget to destroy the cameras, you will have to deal with more crazy auto aim NPCs. But anyway, it is what it is. Now let's talk about the cutting torch. This one, you can pretty much do this however you want. You can go in aggressive, you can use a hard hat, you can practice stealth. It's, it really doesn't matter because even if you do get caught with this one, they don't send cops after you. Instead, you just get more of those auto aim NPCs, which honestly, if you do it right, you shouldn't have to worry about it anyway. Like, it's just, it really is easy. You just pick up a hard hat if you really don't want to deal with NPCs. 
they'll trust a hard hat, they'll let you in, and you just go around looking, and you'll eventually find it. Now let's talk about the weapons. For this one, there's two possibilities for mission. The first one being the Merryweather mission. Let's go ahead and talk about that. It'll send you to Merryweather HQ, and the game tells you to follow a helicopter, but it will go to one of these three locations that I listed off right there. And what you can do is just go to HQ, spawn the helicopter, or let it spawn, you know, do the thing to make it spawn. And then just head out to a location. Like I said, it'll be one of those three. It'll be either Sandy Shores, uh, uh, just west of the airfield, Grapeseed, just east of that airfield, or at the power station over by the coast. And once you find it, just kill all the enemies, wait for the helicopter. Now, don't kill the helicopter immediately or it'll fail the mission. Wait for it to go from the blue indicator to the red target. When it turns into the red target, then fire a missile. Wait for it. Now you might have to go close because sometimes it bugs out and it's still waiting for you. If that's the case, just go towards it, wait for it to turn red, turns red, then fire. Now go ahead and land. Now there's a pattern to notice here is that these guys are crazy in interiors. No. Okay. So what I recommend doing when you go in, have a shotgun ready. And take out this guy first. I use an RPG because I just felt lazy, but you know, do whatever you gotta do, right? Now the Avengers gonna immediately take off, grab a parachute if you don't have one already, and jump out. Now when you're parachuting, try to land near a helicopter and avoid these NPCs. More NPCs will spawn and remember the trick I said before. Um, kill three of them because they'll usually spawn in waves of four and instead of killing the fourth one, shoot him a few times, wait for him to be to like stay down injured and then fly away. What that does is it makes sure that no NPCs spawn and in the meantime they can't kill you. So once that's out of the way, you know what to do, get back in the Sparrow and fly back to the submarine. I usually despawn and respawn my submarine if I get this mission just to make sure I don't have to go that far. Now let's talk about the other mission possibility in which case I'll send you to a CEO office somewhere in the city. Now, always go through the roof. Land a helicopter somewhere on the roof. You might have to do some maneuvering, but always land on the roof. It's easier to go that way. Now, as for this, it is technically possible to do this stealth. Uh, I never successfully done this part stealth myself. I've tried, but I know it is possible. I've seen people do it. Go around, take these guys out. Now, again, do whatever you have to do. Uh, shotguns are really good for this. The new uh, military rifle is actually pretty good for this. Uh, combat MG. Hell, RPG. You know, do whatever you gotta do. Take these guys out. They did eventually spot me, but, you know, it's whatever. It, you know, do whatever you gotta do. Now, the safe is gonna be locked, so you go to the computer hack it and people usually struggle with this but it's actually pretty simple what I like to do is I'll start at the top I'll scroll right and it will put me slightly down eventually I will come across just the first two digits just look for the first two digits that's all you need you'll eventually find it and it's unlocked grab the weapons and you're good to go now remember when you exit don't press right on the d-pad. That'll put you on the ground. Press left on the d-pad when you go to the elevator. That way it puts you back on the roof. Now, helicopters will spawn after you. These guys are nuts. Now, what I recommend doing? Shoot the gunners. Don't shoot down the helicopters. Shoot down the gunners. That way, more helicopters don't spawn. But at the same time, they can't take you out. So... They're basically just flying around not doing anything and you don't have to worry about it. But that's done, head back to the sub, and you've got your weapons. And finally the last prep. 
This is technically the first on the list of preps, but the reason I'm saving this for last is because every time I do, every time you do this prep, it sends you all the way up north to Polito. So go ahead, hop in the helm, fast travel, and exit from the Sparrow. Man, the Sparrow, oh, that thing is a workhorse. I absolutely love the Sparrow. Once you get over there, immediately run to the Sparrow. And if you don't already have a scuba suit outfit saved, I recommend clicking the one that's in the submarine because a scuba suit is going to be really handy for this. Not a necessity, and honestly, you don't even need rebreathers, but a scuba suit definitely helps. You can breathe basically forever, and you actually do swim faster, so having a scuba suit does help. There's going to be multiple boats and one helicopter. Make sure you make sure you gun all of them down. You don't want them killing you while you're underwater. And yes, they can do that. I don't know why either. There's usually going to be some kind of an island near you can land on. If not, just find the closest place you can land it and then land it there. And then immediately take your scuba suit and swim to the submarine. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So this submarine is one of the hardest places I have ever had to deal with NPCs. It's even worse than Bogdan. Oh man. So anyway, I recommend using a shotgun of some kind in combination with grenades. Because there's just some corners you cannot shoot around. So you're going to have to use explosives. Even the friggin' Gordon Ramseys are going to kill you. It's unreal. The sonar jammer will be in one of three places. It's going to be somewhere in the submarine. I don't know when you see it. It'll be like this big black box with a screen on it. You, you, you just can't miss it. Now, now, you probably will die a few times doing this prep. At least until you get the hang of it. Because honestly, it's just, again, crazy NPC accuracy. Just take your time. Go slowly through the submarine, you'll eventually find it, you can pick it up, and you can exit the same way you went in. And again, scuba suit. Go over to where your helicopter is, get an AR ready, and kill the gunners. Don't kill, don't destroy the helicopter, don't kill the pilot, kill the gunners. That way, new helicopters don't spawn, and you can't get shot out. And now, we move on to the finale. So here we go. Like I said, you do not need any extra preps. Um, all you need to do is the bare minimum, and I'll show you why through here. Now, now, real quick, before we do this, or before you do a finale, look very carefully at the options I select. These are what you're going to want to select. The approach vehicle, the Kasatka. Enter through the enter through the drainage tunnel compound entry drainage tunnel exit Kasaka just in case you never know time of day I always say it tonight because you know they have lower visibility however that works and you should be set you can go daytime if you want I just like going at nighttime because apparently it gives them less visibility but you as a player still have full visibility so I wonder how that works now because you selected the drainage tunnel, you can scuba swim all the way over there. And because you have the scuba suit, you'll be able to swim faster. Now, it will take a while to swim over there, but it's well worth it. You're actually saving time in the long run. Because this way you don't have to mess with like vehicles, you don't have to mess with the long fin. You're literally right at the drainage tunnel and you can just swim your way through. And exiting the compound, take a bike go out quickly to secondary which we'll talk about later now this part honestly you'll just get better at practice like there's not much I can say about this just again take your time you know go at your own pace and it's and you'll eventually get the hang of it swim through the tunnel now for some reason with a lot of these prompts you have to double tap right hand d-pad I don't know why they don't specify, but you're going to have to double tap on a lot of these. I guess it's just a weird bug, but whatever. Now, I like to go up this way 
just for that guy because you never know he might drop a key you don't need the key though go around this way though this is the way you want to go there's a guy over to the right here make sure he's not looking otherwise he'll spot you take out those two make sure you're quick when you take them out by the way usually a guy will walk this way if he does just take him out away from the camera make sure the camera doesn't see him come up here take out that guy go up the stairs and around make sure you kill this guy otherwise he's gonna hear you when you kill the other guy up here now go up the stairs go around wait for this guy I usually just bonk him on the head but you can shoot him if you want go to the safe take the money real quick now if there is a painting here go for it um, if not don't worry about it we'll get to that later there usually is at least one painting somewhere in El Rubio's office if not don't worry about it we'll, we'll get to some more secondary loot later now these fingerprint hacks are easy oh, um, I'll probably do a guide talking about these in another video but for now just focus on this guide I don't actually have time to talk about this right now in fact the next video I make will probably be talking about these fingerprints at least in depth so this actually is really easy you can knock these out really quickly as long as you know the trick to it which again I'll talk about in my next video go in go down and this is actually another reason you want the cutting torch because it makes getting through these locks way easier you don't need any extra tools on the island as long as you get the cutting torch now if you have the safe codes it's really easy just put in the code that Pavel gives you if you get the plasma cutter it works pretty much the same way as the thermal drill just do quick long bursts without overheating but either way it's pretty simple and you do get better with practice now you exit pretty much the same way you come in except you take the route I'm taking right now in fact let's get a quick replay just to make sure you know the exact route I took now go through the door <coughs> go down the stairs and once you get to the bottom of the stairs it's exactly as follows alright ready just go right there will be a set of stairs here go down go left and the door is just straight ahead now first time it's confusing but once you've done it a few times you pretty much memorize the compound if that guy's blocking the door just wait for him to pass I wouldn't bother killing him because his route is pretty clear of the door except for that one spot <coughs> excuse me take that guy out take that guy out take these two guys out and there might be a camera here if there is take that out and just take a bike out now I would recommend going slow in this area because concrete bushes you know forget New York this is a real concrete jungle but um yeah watch out for the bushes of death um yeah take the bike maneuver as best you can go at a pace but you know keep it steady now I usually go this way because you can squeeze right between these two cones of vision you can take these two guys out if you're quick enough now one of these guys will come this way if the left one comes just wait for him to pass if the right one comes you can take him out as you can see here the one on the right is on his way take him out you can usually take him out before he spots you and there will usually be something in here as you can see for me it was weed hell yeah now just grab whatever you can because at this point you're an elite challenge you can just grab whatever whatever you like you like you take in fact I would just grab everything because you know money's money if there's not enough there just go this way and there will usually be something here too and there's two spawn points in each of the sheds which basically means if one's empty go to the other and there's sure to be something there if there's not enough here and there wasn't a painting in the office just head up to the airfield you'll miss out on elite challenge but you'll at least be able to fill your bag now at this point you're gonna want to make sure you take out this guy at the end of the first pier he 
he'll be sitting by himself. You can take aim, take him out, and take one of these boats. Just carefully maneuver, make sure you don't alert them. And again, that I forgot to mention, there's usually a guy at the end of the uh, waterway. Make sure you take him out. But once you do that, you're home free, and you just gotta like get all this back. And that's honestly about it. That's the Cairo Perico heist. This is actually, ironically, this is the simplest heist I have ever seen in this game, and I played this game for years. You know, I remember being back on the PS3, and I remember thinking the Fleeka job was simple. Oh man, but like, that's it. That's all you need to know about the Cayo Perico heist. Now, I will be making a guide on the fingerprints. That's to come next. But for the most part, this is uh, the heist. So let me know what you guys think. And let me know if you have any tips and tricks you would like to share. Leave them down below in the comments. If you like this, leave a like. And subscribe if you want to support my channel. I'm sorry this video took so long. Sorry. I'm sorry this video took so long. I just wanted to make sure I was clear about, you know, the ins and outs of this. Because I know a lot of people still struggle. But this is a great way to make money. And apparently it goes on a 50% bonus because of this week. But, like, whatever. Even without bonus. This is undoubtedly the best way so far we have to make money. So... I can definitely see this still being profitable even in a few years, but that's it for now. I'm out. Stay safe, guys.